And so we've reached the end of the Linux Desktop December series, KDE Plasma 5. So first off, let's address the elephant in the room. His name's Boobart and he really wanted to join me for this video. Now, okay, the elephant in the room, KDE. The two most common things I see written about it are, it's bloated and it crashes all the time. First off, the memory usage. Uh, comparing it to all the desktops I've reviewed, the KDE, and oh, the cute desktops as well, have really come out on top. The only GTK desktop to have beaten KDE is LXDE. Gnome, Cinnamon, Mate were all higher. Xface was lower, but really that is it. The cute desktops were among the lowest of the memory usage. In fact, you got the likes of Lumina, which used up 180 meg of RAM and only the old 90s desktops could compete with it. <laughs> That's saying something there. Okay, the next point, KDE crashes all the time. We've gone through a massive period of transition here from the Plasma 4 desktop to the Plasma 5 desktop and early in the development of Plasma 5, it wasn't that stable. And I suppose you could also look back at Plasma 4 as well, but no, no, for the sake of this video, I am looking at Plasma 5. We only got the Plasma 5.5.5 desktop included in the Kubuntu 16.04, and that wasn't great. It had its moments, and yeah, I, even I nearly resorted to go back to Kubuntu 14.04 to get to the Plasma 4 desktop again. But no, I kind of tried driving on further, get to the Plasma 5.6 desktop, and honestly, if you'd use the Plasma 5.6 desktop, you would be scarred for life from KDE. It was horrific in terms of stability. But if you drive on further into the Plasma 5.7 and 5.8, Things have gotten a lot better. Now 5.8 is actually classed as a long-term support release for Plasma. And now Plasma 5.8.4, which I think is the current version, certainly the one I'm using in KDE Neon, it's pretty good. There's only a couple of ways I get things to crash. The first is adjusting the settings within VirtualBox. Inserting a new drive into a virtual operating system tends to cause KWIN to glitch. It causes the desktop to be redrawn, show the crash box, and I just carry on working. Nothing lost. The second glitch I get can be within Caden Live when I start stacking up effects. I sometimes lose the left hand panel on my screen, or it would be I would just lose a panel on the desktop. Fortunately, if I trigger off the previous issue with VirtualBox, I redraw the desktop and I carry on working. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> Only two problems I get. It's not exactly a major system crash that. Anyway, let's take more of a look at the desktop. So starting with a look at the basic KDE desktop, this is KDE Neon, which is a minimal Ubuntu-based distro. So you can see upon startup, we're using 373 meg of RAM with nothing much opened. The cool desktop environment started out in 1996, and the transition now to Plasma 5 has seen a huge amount of improvements over the previous releases of the Plasma desktop. For example, now the customization still has a large number of options, but has also been simplified. Simply right-clicking on the launcher and selecting alternatives give me a few different options here. So I can switch to an application menu. It's got a different style. With this view, you can immediately see the applications within the categories. We still get the text searcher, and this text searcher is the finest I've seen in any desktop or any operating system. I'll come into that a bit more later in the video when I look at my desktop, so we can see a bit more so looking further at the alternatives, got the application dashboard, which is my favourite. This is similar to the widget home run launcher in KDE 4, but it's now part of the KDE desktop in Plasma 5. Let's open up an application, something like Dolphin. So looking at the task manager, so by default we've got the icon and name of the application, as well as the thumbnail. And when you're playing a video, that'll be a live view of the video. So we'll right click the task manager area, go to alternatives. Again, we have more options here, the icon only task manager list or a window list. I like the icon only task manager view. And looking on the right hand side of the panel, we have indication that there are updates available, network manager, volume control, the status and notification of various devices, as well as the option to eject USB devices when they're connected. We have a time, date and calendar, and then finally we have what used to be the cashew menu, it's now a hamburger menu, where you can adjust the panel. So I could choose the screen edge, push it over to any other edge, you can change the size of it. It's very easy to customise that. And put it back down the screen, and set it to the bottom. Well now that we've seen the basic KDE desktop, I want to go across to my system, so we can get more of the full use of it. 
So you can see I have my KDE desktop set up slightly differently. So I have two panels on the left hand side and a partial panel at the top of the screen. So going back to the application launcher and the dashboard view, these folders are immediately selectable just hovering the mouse over. The text searcher, as I mentioned, is one of the finest I've seen. For example, if I'm after Firefox, I can just start typing F, well, it's found it immediately. And I can use the keyboard arrow keys to move around or use the mouse. As far as searching for documents goes, well, there's a document immediately, third gen SVG. Looking at it in the real time search, I could literally just go 3rd, enter. And I've opened up the file immediately. I don't have to type in the exact name. For example, all these desktop December files I've got there on the screen are all entitled desktop space hyphen something. So rather than typing in the hyphen, I could just literally go LXQT and it's found it. So if I pick the application off at the top of the screen and let's drag it to the top left hand side, you see I resize two quadrants as well as halves and up to full screen. Hovering the mouse into the left hand side of the screen picks up the currently open applications and allows you to select between them. That's a default setting, although you can change the actions of the corners. Taking a look at Dolphin, which I have to say is one of the finest file managers available, again, for any operating system. I can grab an image file from Dolphin, drag it over to the desktop, set that as a wallpaper, although it doesn't render this SVG file so well. I've kind of stacked up a lot of effects in that SVG file, so I'll kind of uh, give KDE the benefit of the doubt here that it requires a better vector image editor to handle the blurring effects. So opening up the image in Gwenview Image Viewer, we do have the option of tweaking it slightly. You can crop, you can rotate, and you can resize it, and you can also do red eye reduction. But it also has a few file management functions here as well. For example, F2, rename it, pressing escape, so you've got file management view and some basic file manager functions. So as you see on the right hand side we get a preview. For the case of video and music files you can play them from that preview. You can do split screen browsing, open up a terminal at the bottom of the screen. I have to say that is really useful that terminal. Yeah, just moving around and it, it follows the folder that you're currently in. You can rename multiple files at once. So Let's just say test space. And I've got them renamed in one go. Let's say I don't want them like that. Undo, control Z. Oh, we have pressed control Z a few times though. Problem solved. Opening up a bash script in Kate, you can see the code is highlighted nicely. You also have a fancy scroll bar here and you can just highlight over the areas and get, zoom in on the code. And you can also get a rough idea of what the code actually is just from that overview. Lot, there's a lot of lines in this file, so perhaps it's a bit difficult to see there. Yeah, 1600 lines. And I like how it highlights where you've got deprecated and to do. Right, opening up a video. Let's take that out of full screen. Oh, and pause it. So right click on VLC. We've got the multimedia controls. So I can play, pause, next and previous. I've got a list of previously opened documents. For some reason in KD Neon, I'm missing the feature of opening up a private window within the browsers. I know that feature exists in KDE, and I know it exists in other versions of KDE 5.8.4, because I've mentioned it before on YouTube, and other people have said, yeah, I'm running it in Arch, and it works fine. If you don't want to see your previously opened documents, you can choose to forget them. If I want to pin an application to a launcher, I can right click and go, show a launcher when not running. Similarly, to remove them, same again, remove launcher. You notice I have a selection of favorites here. So yeah, you can drag applications over to it or right click, add or remove them. And I can add to panel as well. So it's really flexible here. When it comes to KDE settings, honestly, I could go on for ages here. I mean, where to start really? Look, we've got a little searcher here so you can navigate around because there are a lot of settings you can change. So say I'm after the mouse. Oh yeah, it's under input devices, that figures. But let's be a bit more obscure. I'm after mouse wheel settings. Ah, yes, under input devices. It doesn't point you in the exact direction, but you do get to look around the rough area. So yeah, it'll be under mouse, advanced. You know, I was going to go on to say you can adjust the number of lines the mouse wheel scrolls by. 
is that one of the only desktops or the only desktops in Linux that allows that setting to be changed? And the workspace theming options. Well, you do get the basic option here of going for a light or dark theme, or you can be more granular with it. We go into the desktop theme, and I can choose from, well, there's only a couple of themes pre-installed by default, but uh, yeah, you can get new themes. And this goes online, searches the KDE Look website. There's a growing number nowadays. Continue on, I can adjust the cursor themes, splash screen, various color parts within the applications. I have to say, I am a fan of the Breeze themes. The KDE developers have done a really good job with them, and part of what they've had to do is make the GNOME or GTK applications compatible with themes. And if I look at the application style, you can see we have a GTK theme selector, so I've had to choose the same theme. This is where you can clash a little bit if you don't have the exact same color theme for your Qt and GTK applications, assuming you use a mixture of both. If you use all Qt applications, then no, this feature is irrelevant. You can choose from different icons, as well as installing new themes from online, different emoticons. Again, I can download more from online. The desktop behavior, the desktop effects, these are the compiz like effects. There's one feature I quite like to have is making the application transparent when you move it. It's very useful if you've got a progress box in an application behind the application you're currently working on. Here's different actions you can set to the screen edges. Yeah, a few different actions there. Screen locking, and whether you want to set a password to log back in. Number of virtual desktops. I think I mentioned in the GNOME review that I don't really use virtual desktops, and yeah, as you can see, I don't. I'm perfectly happy with one desktop. I do have the option of changing it. Window management. There's additional scripts you can add to Kwin. Yep, yeah, you can download more scripts. There was a script I used to like, removing the window title bar on the full screen applications. Sadly, that script no longer works. There's the option to set custom keyboard shortcuts. And if you're not sure where something is, you can search for it. And you can add additional custom shortcuts as well. And that's what I've done here when I press Control or Delete. Brings up the system monitor. Yeah, it's uh, kind of using up a bit of system resources just because I'm recording the screencast as well. Start up shutdown. By default, you can restore your previous session with KDE. I don't like that. I like to start fresh, but I like to have one application open here, the Clementine Media Player. And another feature I really like, the KDE Connect, where you can connect to an Android phone. And it's not only synchronizing files, but it also displays alerts on the screen. So if you get a call or a text, and if you're listening to music and you receive a call, it actually pauses your music player, lets you take the call, and then as soon as you're finished, resumes the music player. Brilliant feature. Although I rebuilt my operating system a while back and I obviously haven't re-enabled the feature yet. You can add widgets to the desktop, so right click, add widgets. For example, I could have an analog clock. Yeah, that's all right like that, but uh, you know what, I'm not happy with it that way, so I'm just gonna rotate it, and I can. So let's remove that. Yep, that's gone, so I get a notification there. And there's so much more I could discuss with a desktop. I've never really looked at activities before. I've also got the option of configuring the desktop and tweaks, showing a desktop toolbox, shows the hamburger menu on the desktop and gives you the option of removing it. So that was a look at the KDE desktop. So all in all, I am really impressed with it, but would I recommend it as the best desktop? No, it's under heavy development. In fact, I think it is the most heavily developed desktop we have at the moment in Linux. We're seeing new features all the time. I think in time, the stability of the desktop will get even better. And then I'll have no problems recommending it. And there are also a wide variety of applications you can have with KDE, and I've not even looked at those either, just because this video is getting awfully long. And that concludes the look at the KDE Plasma 5 desktop. So from me and Boobar, we wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thanks for watching. See you later. Yay.